Hi, this is Ben with Novolux Stereophonic. In my previous video, I went over what I called my two cents on SX1250 bias. While I have this freshly restored SX1250 up on the bench, I didn't want to miss the opportunity to do another technical video. So in this video, I'm going to be going over rated output power, total harmonic distortion, and maximum clipping power. So if that sounds interesting, stick around. So just like the other video, I want to start with going over how everything is connected here at the bench. So to begin, I'm going to short out the leads that are connected to my bench meter, my bench DMM. So we're rolled out there. And now I'm going to measure across the actual speaker wires that are connected to the dummy load. So we're at about 8.1 ohms on that channel. and right around the same area on the other channel. Now to make sure I get an accurate measurement here, as far as watts go, I need to set my load resistance to 8.1 ohms, which is, which is right here. So my distortion analyzer is set to the actual load, not just 8 ohms, but 8.1 ohms, so that when it reads out in watts, I'm accurate, and we're gonna be double checking that with another meter simultaneously. Now that we've confirmed that the, the dummy load uh, measurements are set into the distortion analyzer, I'm going to go over all the meters and everything that's connected. So this meter is showing the raw negative rail voltage for the right channel. So I'm connected across one of the rectifiers down here, which is basically giving me a direct readout of the negative power supply capacitor, the negative rail of the right channel. This meter here is showing us output power in volts AC that's measured directly across speaker B. So I've got speaker A and speaker B both on right now. Speaker B right channel is the siglent bench meter and then the actual load is connected to speaker A. The distortion analyzer is measured across the dummy load as well as the scope traces. Blue trace is right channel, yellow trace is left channel. Right now they're overlaid. The SX1250 almost always has near perfect channel balance, which is awesome. You rarely see that on vintage pieces. And the reason being the volume control in the SX1250 is fantastic. Dummy load is down here, so I'm connected here for eight ohms. And then this is where we're monitoring across the dummy load for the scope and the distortion analyzer. And then the final connection, I'm feeding from the output of the distortion analyzer back into the scope on the purple trace. So that will show us the distortion elements as we do these tests. All right, let's get started. Okay, to start out, I just want to check the accuracy of my watt readout, so the math and everything that's going on there. So I'm set up, and I forgot to mention this in the setup video, I am feeding out of the low distortion oscillator from the Panasonic analyzer here, and that's going into the auxiliary input of the 1250. So I've got volume control, maybe around 60%, and I'm feeding a signal of 69.2 millivolts in, which is yielding approximately 10 watts per channel currently. So to check the accuracy of this, this display, I'm just going to do an Ohm's law calculation on the bench DMM. So if I take 9.182 times 9.182, I get 84.3, divide that by my load of 8.1 ohms, 10.4 watts. So this is off by less than a watt, let's say. And feel free to verify me if we get up into the power. I'm gonna leave this meter on. So you can check at any time uh, you want if we're accurately showing uh, the wattage on the Panasonic. Let's cut right to the chase and do what everybody wants to know is how much does the SX1250 really produce. So I'm gonna start ramping this up. Right now we're at 10 watts. I'm at 60 watts there. I have to adjust my scope here. And again, that channel balance is just amazing on these 1250s. We're now getting up there in power. We're at 190 watts. This is the distortion starting to creep in. This is clipping. See the flat part of the, the waveform there? That's actually clipping. If I take it down to where the distortion goes away, realistically, I'm at about 175 watts. Just for you sticklers out there, I'm gonna go down and just creep this up. You see, it is already coming in there. See right here, so I'm just gonna make that little bit of distortion go away. I'm not clipping. 180 watts. 
I don't think you're gonna get much more than that out of an SX1250. This is at about 123 volts mains. So that is the true output power of an SX1250 is around 180 watts per channel if you're driving both channels into approximately eight ohms. Now, let me show you this. If I take this back into clipping, hard clipping, I'm obviously clipping right there. I'm gonna take the balance control and just feed it over to the right channel. See that? And I can probably go a little bit further. Distortion starting to creep in there. I'm at 200 watts. So if I take all the distortion away around 195, and now I'm gonna pan down so that you can see what's going on here. Let's see, maybe I can come out a little bit. So I want you to pay attention to this meter here. So right now I'm hard clipping because I'm running both channels. Let's get it down to where the distortion goes away. Around there. You can see my power supply voltage. As I take the left channel away, we open up some power supply headroom for the other channel. That's why I can test one channel alone up to around 200 watts, but when both of them are together, we max out around 175, 180. For the rest of this video, I'm going to be going over verifying the distortion plots that are present in the SX1250 promotional literature. Now, the reason that we test amplifiers the way that we do today is because in 1974, the FTC came out with a specific rule. So check this out measured pursuant to Federal Trade Commission's trade regulation rule on power claims for amplifiers. So before the, the late 70s, manufacturers were cheating. They were adding to say they had an amplifier that was 30 watts per channel. They might advertise it as a 60 watt amplifier, um, or they might use peak power instead of RMS power. And it allowed them to cheat and make it look like their amplifier was better than another amplifier that was tested uh, more realistically. And Macintosh is fam famous for this. They actually used real specifications and um, would verify their specifications at, at their clinics and stuff and show how everyone else was cheating. So in long story short, in 1974 or thereabouts, the FTC came out with this rule and it basically kickstarted the power wars and, and uh, amplifiers could be compared in equal terms, at least for the output power specification. And that's kind of uh, where this SX1250 came from. So Let's, uh, let's go through these curves and see if this unit is testing up to this specification. The first graph that we have here is a plot of output power versus THD. Now, this doesn't say THD plus N. Um, we're gonna test it that way, but I may toggle into THD measurement, which uses FFT or fast Fourier transform. So it's possible that these graphs were not directly measured on something, but instead somebody was crunching numbers and doing the math on the, or doing an FF, FFT on the actual results that they were measuring and then made this plot based on that. But anyways, we're gonna verify this. We have the ability to do this with the, uh, with the Panasonic analyzer. So I'm gonna start with, um, I'm not gonna test the 20 Hertz because you can see the curve for the, for the low frequency and the mid band is the same. 20, 20 Hertz and one kilohertz are basically overlaid. So we're just going to test at one kilohertz and 20 kilohertz and see if the power level tracks through the output power range as shown on this diagram. So this is interesting. What we see is the minimum distortion is around 100 watts. And then obviously it shoots up once we get into uh, the clipping range. So we're gonna be looking specifically at the 100 watt mark where I can get an easy point here at 20 watts. Um, and then this is, must be 10 watts here. Is that right? No, that's one watt. So we'll do one watt, 20 watts, and 100 watts, and see if we get this downward tra uh, trajectory. All connections are the same. I'm just running this at one watt. So we see our readout of one watt here, and there's gonna be a slight difference um, in the distortion measurement between the left and the right channel that we're measuring at extremely low distortion levels here. This analyzer puts out a signal that's about 0.0008% pure sine wave. So when we're measuring this, it, there's any little tiny thing like a, a slightly dirty speaker selector switch, the banana plug going into my patch panel not being just completely on the right contact, it can introduce distortion. So because of things in the amplifier and in the test equipment, there is a slight difference from channel to channel. But the main thing here at one watt is that we are at about 0.04%, 0.04%. 
0.036% THD plus N. Um, I'm just going to back this down, and if the curve is correct, we should see the distortion rise as we reduce the power. Well, enough of that. Let's go up to the next increment, which is 20 watts, I believe. And I'm just going to ramp through this, and we'll see kind of how it tracks. So we are going down a little bit as we are approaching that, that mark. So we're at 1 kilohertz and just tracking down, hopefully, as the power goes up. So we're going to stop here at 20 watts and see if we've reduced to around 0.01%. here to 20 watts all right left channel 0.01% and right channels even lower so this is verified as well here I don't think we're going to meet that 100 watt spec but we're gonna see what happens here Okay, we're right around at 100 watts there. And if we look at the right channel, we are kind of making that 0.06% reading. Left channel, again, is a little bit off. If I just mess around with my connections here at the bench, sometimes I can get it and see that bar altering a little bit. So it's these little, little tiny things that are keeping us from measuring that exactly. If I plugged everything directly into the analyzer and didn't have a bunch of patch panel and stuff, I think we'd get some more consistent results. But anyways, we're meeting the spec there, at least on the right channel. And just for example, if I come down and do an FFT on it, both channels do end up meeting it. So I'm not sure if they were, again, measuring THD plus N or just straight THD. So this is, this is the representation of the straight THD measurement. Um, and this is THD plus N. If we take this and ramp it up, so now we're at almost rated power. You can see the distortion starting to increase from that point. So we are following that, that plot pretty closely. So that's the, that's the one kilohertz. Let's do a quick chest, uh, check at those two points for uh, 20 kilohertz. Okay, I'm back to one watt at one kilohertz. Let's change the frequency. Okay, we're now at 20 kilohertz and at one watt, it's supposed to be about the same, 0.04%. So it's doing that. The next measurement that we're going to be doing is at 20 watts, and we should be around, what is that, around 0.02%. So let's grab the amplitude and start ramping it up. What are we looking for, 20 watts? Right around there. So we're meeting here 0.02%. Right channel's a little, or left channel's a little bit higher. And then the final spot that we're gonna grab is 100, and that should be somewhere between 0 0.02 and 0 0.03. So in, th in this case, it's actually gonna be going up at 100 uh, watts, where in the one kilohertz test, it was actually the lowest possible around 100 watts. So we should see the, the distortion go up from here. Um, amplitude, yes. Right around there. 0 0.04, 0 0.05. So this distortion is measuring a little bit higher than what this curve is showing at that point. It's showing somewhere around this mark when the curve shows it down here. Just for kicks, I'm going to switch it into um, the THD function. And there it's right there. I'm, I'm pretty convinced by these measurements that they're probably doing math on this when they created this curve. And this isn't, this is not THD plus N and it really is THD. So that is the um, first plot. Let's do something slightly different on this one. Next, we're going to do frequency versus THD. So this is going to be at two fixed output power levels, 80 watts and 160 watts. And we're looking for um, curves that go up at low frequency for distortion, bottom out in the mid band, and then increase again as we go up. 
So let's get set up for this and we'll start at the 80 watt mark. Okay, I'm measuring distortion at 80 watts and 0.006%, which actually almost perfectly corresponds to this measurement point down here. So we're at, actually that's 100 hertz, 1K is here. So yeah, a little bit elevated. So we're on the pink trace right now. So I'm in the mid, mid frequency. Let's go down and start at the bottom. Let's go to 20 hertz. Our output power is still at 80 watts. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to touch the amplitude. I'm gonna leave it here so that we can see the frequency response as well. So we've lost about five watts here. So the amplitude of the sine, sine waves here is shrinking as well as expanding out because of the frequency change. 0.004%. And actually we're doing better than specified here. This was point, uh, 0.007. So that's great. Let's take it up to 100 Hertz. And it should be flat here at around 0 0.006, just surpassing that. Next milestone is one kilohertz, which we already did. Let's go through that again. All right, and then the next spot that we're gonna look at is Let's see, there's not a clear crossing here. Let's just see if our distortion starts to go up when we approach 10 kilohertz. We'll see it here. <laughs> it's actually down, look at how low it is. Let's go to five kilohertz for kicks. Good, and then 20 kilohertz. Oh wait, this, there was zeros in there before, 0 0.03. Yeah, this is going up. So before we were at 0 0.00 and now it's at 0 0.01. So distortion is up here at 10 kilohertz. Five kilohertz, a little bit lower, two kilohertz. So o overall on that pink trace, tracking very accurately. Let's test that 160 watts. We're now gonna ramp through the frequencies for the 160 watt plot here. And actually that's where I've identified all of these. So they were the same around here, but we actually were verifying this reading a little bit lower at, at, uh, at one kilohertz. So I'm at one kilohertz here, making 160 watts. Let's switch over to frequency and we're gonna start at 20 hertz. There it is. This is saying 0 0.007, so we're good there. Let's go to the next point, 100 hertz. Looking very good. 1K. And that is moving up, so that's consistent with this part here. We're starting to move up in distortion. Let's stop at five kilohertz, even though we don't have a nice plot mark for that. Again, from 0 0.005 to 0 0.01, so going up 10 kilohertz and 20 kilohertz. And you can see also alpha power has dropped, so there's a little bit of high frequency roll off here as well. So that, um, that covers the output power. If we look at the, the main sheet though, no more than 0.1%. We never even got close to 1%. So Pioneer, was, or 0.1%, Pioneer was being very conservative with this. Um, no more than 0.05% at 80 watts. That was a pretty low distortion curve there. Um, I don't think we tracked that completely at 0.05%. I'd have to double check um, the 20 kilohertz reading. And then odd that at one watt, usually most amplifiers at one watt are very clean. This one has higher uh, distortion at one watt than it does at 80 watts. But anyways, all that pretty much verified. And it just goes to show how amazing these SX1250s are. Um, and yeah, that's it. So thank you again for stopping by the channel and checking out these videos on the Pioneer SX1250. If you like this content, as always, please subscribe and we will catch you on the next one.